Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this keypad project. And as I click the button on the touch screen, it will send a serial message to the Arduino, and then the Arduino will send a keystroke to my PC. We will start with the display, which is a next gen intelligent display, and you can get those in a few different sizes. This one is 3.5 inch, and I think it's a perfect size for something like a keypad. In order to use it, you have to install and run a dedicated software called Next Gen Editor. And while the software is loading, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And not only you can get PCBs, but also 3D printing, CNC machining and all kinds of manufacturing. They are also celebrating their 90th year's anniversary this month, which means a lot of great discounts. So thank you PCBWay for supporting this channel. And I think that the next gen editor has already loaded, so let's jump there. And in here I will create a new project by clicking this new project icon. I will select the file name and then my display, which is the enhanced, again 3.5 inch in the resolution of 320 by 480 pixels. Go to the display and set the orientation, which will be vertical, and click the OK button. I want to add the button, and when I click the button, I want to send a serial message to the Arduino. So let's do this step by step. Adding the button could be done by clicking this button icon, that will give me a button. And then when I press the button, I want to send something to the Arduino. So for that, I can use this touch press event and put some code in here. And to see all the comments, I can select the help instruction set. And I know that sending a message using the serial communication could be done by calling the printS function, so I'll search for printS. And as you can see here, it will send some data over serial to the MCU. And you can either set some text value, some string or some number, and then you define the number of bytes, zero meaning all bytes, or you can limit it to just few bytes. So I'll copy one of the example, for example this one, and paste it in here. But instead of sending one, two, three, I will just send digit zero, and I want to only send one byte because one character equals one byte. Now when I press the compile button, you will see an error because our button is using font number zero, but we don't have any fonts in our project. And you can generate a font by going to tools and font generator. I will actually cheat a little bit and just add a font from my older project. For example, this one. And this is just a placeholder font because I don't really want to show anything on the button. I want the label, so the txt property to be empty, just empty string, because later on I want to have all the buttons made from images. So again, I will click the compile button and there should be no errors. And I can also click the debug button to test this project inside the simulator. And so as I click this button, you will see some message down here saying 30, and that's just a hex code, hex number. If I switch to string, you will see digit number zero. So it did send a digit number zero, which is exactly what we need to receive on the Arduino site. But before we move to the Arduino, let's upload this project to the display. And probably the easiest way is to use the USB to TTL board, which you can get for just a few dollars. You connect one side to the USB and the other side to the next gen display. The connection is RX to TX, TX to RX, and then ground to ground and 5 volts to 5 volts. After that, you can jump back to the next gen editor. Then inside the next gen editor, click the upload button and click the go button. And in just a few seconds, it should upload our project to the display. Now, as I press the button, you will see that this small LED on this USB to DDL board lights up and it's labeled RX, which stands for receive, so it's receiving some data. So let's move to the Arduino part and you will need Arduino Leonardo because that board could act as a USB device just like the mouse or keyboard, which means that we can send keystrokes. I will connect it to my PC and start the Arduino IDE and select the correct board, which again, in my case, that's the Arduino Leonardo. Now we want to receive some serial message from the next gen display and then send it as a keystroke to the PC. And if I open the documentation for the serial read function, there is actually a very nice example code down here. So what I will do is I will just copy this code into our sketch and let's see what this code is doing. This code first starts the serial communication at a certain speed and then inside the loop it looks if there is something in the serial buffer, meaning if something was sent to the Arduino and if that's the case it will read the current byte into this incoming byte variable and then it will print it back. So let's just upload this to Arduino and test the code. And after you upload it to Arduino, you will hear this sound. That's the sound of disconnecting and connecting the device because Windows thinks that the Arduino Leonardo is either keyboard or mouse. I will click this button to open the serial monitor and then type in something, for example, letter A and then press the enter key. And immediately you see that I have received 97, 13 and 10, which are the symbol numbers for letter A. And this is the line ending, so the scratch return and the line feed. And I see those two values because this is set inside this drop down menu. So I can set this to no line ending and type in, for example, only letter A and now I only see 65 which is a decimal code for the capital A. So it seems to be working and it might be tempting to connect the next gen display to the Arduino because again the next gen display is sending the serial data at the same speed but this will actually not work. And it will not work because the Arduino Leonardo actually has two serial channels. So it has a serial zero which is just a serial and that's used for the communication with the PC using the USB port. It also has a serial one which is used for the TX and RX pins on the board itself. So I'll just copy this line and also start the communication for the serial one. 
and then inside our loop i want to read the value from the serial one because that's the one where the next channel display will be connected and if that's the case i will read the incoming byte from serial one and then i will print it to just serial meaning that i will print it to the pc i will upload it again and pressing anything inside the serial monitor will not do anything because again we are looking for the values coming from serial one so let's just connect the next gen to the arduino there is a small catch and that's the female header pins on both the arduino and the next gen display for that reason i will use this shield which converts the female header pins into male header pins and then i will connect rx to tx and tx to rx and also ground to ground and 5 volts to 5 volts so what I can do now is to open the serial monitor again and then press the button on the next gen keyboard and as soon as I do this I will see I received 48 which is the decimal number 4 digit 0 and I can press this multiple times and you can see that every time I press the button I will see this message. So it seems to be working we are getting the message from the next gen display into the Arduino. Now before we convert this message into the actual keystroke let's add few more buttons to the next gen display and let's also make them nice looking using images. For the design I will use the online tool called Figma and inside here I will create a new frame that will be the size of 320 by 480 pixels which is the size of the display. Now I want to have multiple buttons but I will start with just one button and I will draw this by using the rectangle tool and I will draw the rectangle on the size of the canvas itself again 320 by 480 pixels and I want to have four buttons next to each other so I will say 320 divided by 4 and five buttons for the rows so I will say 480 divided by 5 which will give me the size of 80 by 96 pixels. I will remove the fill by clicking this minus icon but I will add the stroke by clicking this plus icon and set the stroke to be outside. Then I will copy this button by dragging the rectangle together with the alt and shift key being pressed so it snaps to the first one and then click the ctrl d button to replicate it two more times, select all four rectangles and do the same thing so drag it to the bottom together with the alt and shift key being pressed and then press ctrl d three more times so we have 20 buttons. But we don't need 20 buttons because some of those should be actually merged together, for example those two buttons should be just one button so I will delete this rectangle and and resize this left rectangle to be bigger and I will do the same thing with this rectangle so again this one will be resized and delete this rectangle and this one will be resized just to mimic the layout of the real numpad. This will be our grid, I will select everything, group it using the Ctrl G shortcut and rename this to grid and maybe even lock it for now and then create a new text by clicking this text tool and type in for example digit 0 and I was using font called JetBrains Mono being the extra light and I think that the size could be for example 32 points and I will move it more to the left side and more to the top so it's not actually in the middle of the button but positioned more like on the real keyboard. Then I will create a copy by dragging it with the Alt and Shift key being pressed and then again Ctrl D two more times and do the same thing for all the other buttons. So drag it with the Shift and Alt key being pressed and then again Ctrl D two more time. We don't need those three labels so I will delete those and then select the text tool and type in the correct values. So this will be 7, 8, 9 and so on and so on. If I open the JetBrains Mono website, there is actually a list of special characters down there and I will use some of those. For example, those three lines for the menu icon, the multiply symbol for the multiplication and then some kind of arrow for the enter key. And there is quite a lot of arrows to choose from. I will go with this one. So those will be our digits. I'll again group everything together. And if I want, I can also insert some kind of background image. I will place the photo in here. And in my case, I've used the photo of the dog that I will place inside the frame. So below everything else, position it to the right position, for example, something like this. And then I will just slightly change the digits and the grid. So for the digits, I will open the fill properties and use the eyedropper tool to select, for example, this bright yellow color. And I will actually use the same color for the grid as well. So for the stroke, I will use also this yellow color, but I will lower the opacity of the layer to maybe like 20% or so. And I think that this will be a nice image for the upstates of those buttons. So we'll just rename this to be numpad up in the resolution of 320 by 480. We also need a downstate of those buttons. So when you click the button, they should probably change in some way. And for that, I need to create a copy of this frame by dragging this frame to the right side together with the alt key being pressed. And let's rename this to numpad downstate. And let's make a few changes. For example, for the background image, Instead of using image, I will just use a solid fill. So open the fill menu and change it from image to just solid color and use our yellow color. For the digits, I will open the fill properties and use the eyedropper tool to sample some of those dark brown colors. And for the grid, let's for example go with the white color. Let's export both images by selecting the frame and clicking this export plus icon and clicking this export numpad up. Let's will export first image and do the same thing for the second frame. So again, click the export plus button and clicking this export button down there. Now we can import both images into our next project. In here I'll open the picture tab and click the plus icon and first select the up state and then also the down state. 
I haven't told you that you actually only need two full screen images because for buttons, you can set the property of the style to be the cropped image and set the pick to be upstate, the zero, and the pick two to be downstate, which is the image number one. Now, when I move the image around, you will see that I will just show the part of the image from the full screen background image. So this way I can just use one image for all the buttons in my design. So I just need to make sure that the sizes are correct. The width should be 160 pixels and the height is also correct, which should be 96 pixels. I can quickly test the design by clicking the debug button and then clicking the button itself. And you can see that not only it sends the message, but it also shows the down state of being the yellow color. So at this point, I can copy and paste the button, change the print as message. So this will be button number one, change the size. So for the small buttons, it will be 80 by 96 and set the correct position and continue like this with every other button. Now, as you might have noticed, I have commented out sending anything for the menu button because later on I want to use this to maybe go to some different screen. For now, I'll just leave it empty to not do anything. And for the enter button, we want to print the enter key, which could be decimal number 10, which stands for the line feed. And that's pretty much all that's required. So I can click the debug button and in here switch to show the strings instead of hexadecimal numbers and then press individual keys to see if I can get the same digits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, divide it, multiply, minus plus, and finally the enter key. And that's being displayed as a hex code because there is no visible enter character. So I guess at this point we can again connect the next screen display to the USB to TTL board and upload it. If I connect it back to Arduino and want to actually see the individual characters, I can quickly cast this to character value, upload it to Arduino. And when I press the buttons on the next gen display now, I can see those individual digits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, divided, multiply, minus, plus, and finally the enter key, which is invisible. But when I press something now, you will see that there is one line space. So the enter key seems to be working as well. I also have zero and dot. So at this point, everything is working fine. We just need to take those values and send those as a keystrokes. For that, we will be using library keyboard, which you don't need to install because it should be already there. And that's for emulating the keyboard. And if I open the documentation, the first function is called keyboard begin, and it will start emulating a keyboard connected to a computer. So down here, there is a sample code for including the library. So I'll just copy this line into our Arduino sketch to include the library and then keyboard begin to start the communication that we want to send something. And we actually have quite a lot of functions. We have the press function, print, print line, release and the write. And I will most likely go with keyboard write because it's only for sending one ASCII character. So I'll copy keyboard write. And instead of printing our incoming byte using the serial print line function, I'll just say keyboard write of our incoming byte. And I actually don't need to print this to the serial port anymore. So I will comment it out and upload this to Arduino. And you might be surprised that this is actually all that's needed. So if I, for example, start notepad and start pressing individual keys, so one, two, three, four, five, six, you will see those digits appearing in the notepad. So I can continue like this, seven, eight, nine, divide it, multiply, minus, plus, zero, dot, and the enter key should jump to the next line and I can continue like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so on. Obviously, we are not limited to just using Notepad. I can use, for example, a calculator and type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, multiplied by 9. And if I press the Enter key, you will see the result. So everything seems to be working just fine. And you can see that in just a few minutes, we were able to create a nice looking numpad with a custom image using the NextGen Intelligent Display together with the Arduino Leonardo. If you want to know more about the NextGen displays, I actually have another video where I describe the process step by step with a little bit more details. In the description of this video is also a link to the GitHub page where you can download all the source files and hopefully create your own version of the numpad. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.